Okay, so in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can calculate the approximate dimensions of an eddy according to different sections of the Kolmogorov turbulence energy cascade. And as you may remember, this diagram represents um, the, the amount of energy stored in eddies of different sizes. So at this end it's the very largest eddies, and as they progressively get smaller, the energy uh, transfers to smaller and smaller eddies and uh, ultimately they dissipate into heat. So correspondingly we have these three stages of the cascade. Production, where the scales are a function of turbulence kinetic energy and dissipation. Then the transfer where the scales are a function of the dissipation rate and the size of the eddies and destruction where the eddies are a function again of the dissipation rate and viscosity. So the idea is each of these three phases production, transfer and destruction can be characterized by an eddy of different scales, and if we say that our typical eddy has a length scale L, has a velocity U, and a turnover time T, then we can start to work out what each of these will be at, at the three different phases. So this one is called the integral scale because it's where the majority of the energy is um, uh, represented in the turbulent cascade and the uh, the smallest one is referred to as the Kolmogorov length scales and it's at this scale that the turbulence is destroyed and becomes heat. So in order to calculate the representative uh, scales for length, velocity and time at these two ends of the spectrum we first need to note the dimensions of the quantities that they are a function of, as follows. So the turbulence kinetic energy is, uh, has um, a length scale squared divided by a time scale squared. It's basically a velocity squared. The dissipation rate is, the, is uh, an energy per unit time, so it's uh, like a power. And the viscosity is a length scale squared divided by a time scale. And basically, to find the time and length scales at each end of the spectrum, we just combine these quantities uh, according, uh, in order to get the, the, the scales that we want, as follows. So to start with, we find the time scale at the integral scales. And since the integral scales is just a function of the k and epsilon, and we can see very easily that the only difference between these two quantities is one time scale, we simply have to divide k by epsilon in order to get a quantity that has a dimensions of time. So that's fairly straightforward. Now to find the length scale at the integral scale, it's a little bit more complicated. We know that it's a function of k and epsilon again, and we can apply basic dimensional analysis in order to work out um, what it should be as follows. So basically we say that our length scale is a function of k and epsilon, and put it, and it has the vowels n and m. And in order to find those, we write down the dimensions longhand. So it's k is l squared t to the minus two to the power n, and epsilon is l squared t to the minus three to the power m. And some combination of n and m will give us the dimension that we want. And in order to find n and m, we relate the uh, powers of the dimensions as follows. So for the length scale, the length is what we want, so it has a power 1, and that is equal to 2n plus 2m, as follows. And for a time scale, well there's no time here, so it has an index of 0, and if we relate 0 to the powers minus 2n minus 3m, then we have these two expressions that we have to solve simultaneously. Without too much trouble, we can see that n is 3 over 2, and m is minus 1. And so the length scale, Lt, is k 3 over 2 divided by epsilon. 
And so for the integral scale, we have the length scale, k3 halves over epsilon, and the time scale, k over epsilon. Now let's do the same for the Komogorov scales. Noting this time that at the smallest scales of the cascade, the turbulence is a function of the dissipation rate and the viscosity. So we have to use the dimensions of these two quantities instead now. But otherwise the procedure is exactly the same. So for the Komogorov time scale, this is t and we use the subscript nu for the Komogorov scales. We write it out as before, and we note that to find the unknown powers n and m, we have to make two simultaneous equations out of the indices as follows. So for the time, the power 1 is equal to minus 3n minus m. And similarly, for the length, the power 0 is equal to 2n plus 2m. And solving simultaneously, we find that n is equal to minus a half and m is equal to a half. So that the Komogorov time scale is equal to mu over epsilon, all to the power of half. And now similarly, to find the Komogorov length scale, in exactly the same way, we know that it's a function of epsilon and mu. The unknowns are to the powers n and m, and we relate the dimensions just as before, but this time to get the length scale. And this time we find that for the powers of L, 1 is equal to 2n plus 2m, and for the powers of time t, 0 is equal to minus 3n minus m. And this time n is equal to the minus quarter, and m is equal to, is to, equal to 3 quarters. And so this time the Komogorov length L mu is equal to mu to the power 3 over epsilon, all to the power a quarter. And so, in summary, what we've done in this video is use Komogorov's observations about the dependence at different stages of the energy cascade on different parameters. So the integral length scale in the production phase, the turbulence was observed only to depend on k and epsilon, and we used that and dimensional analysis to find length and time approximations, and then doing exactly the same method at the small end of the turbulence energy spectrum at the Komogorov scales, where um, the scales depend only on epsilon and the viscosity mu. We did exactly the same to find the, the approximations for the Komogorov time and length scales as follows. That's it.